am going to be doing the worst product from every brand at Sephora, at least all of the brands that I'm familiar with. If you're new here, I test a ton of makeup, particularly from Sephora. So I've tried almost every brand that is sold at Sephora. I already have the number one best product from every brand at Sephora on this channel. So I will have that link down below. So it only made sense. Natural progression to go to the worst. So I have the whole list down for you. If there are some brands missing, one, maybe I just didn't have an answer for you, for example. Like I don't have Estee Lauder because I've tried two things from Estee Lauder and they're both amazing. So I don't know the worst product. So that happened in a few cases where those brands will be in the best but not in the worst. But these are all brands that I feel comfortable enough to share with you what the worst product is. So let's get into it starting off with ABH. And for me, from what I've tried, I remember not really ever getting into the contour and highlight stick. From my memory, I just remember it being really hard, really cakey, very difficult to blend. At least if it wasn't like that when I bought it, it got that way pretty quickly and dried out because maybe it was softer when I bought it, you know, but then it dried out and I didn't like that. Honestly, ABH was a hard pick. They don't really have that many bad products, but I just remember this being one of the few products that I really didn't like from ABH and it being dry. Armani Beauty, I have the Eye Tint Long Lasting Liquid Shadows. These just don't do it for me. So I have two shades in my current collection. I actually think I have three, but the shimmer shades in here are really, really sheer. They're very thin and you just don't get anything of it. It almost is like, what is even the point? I also do have the matte version of it that I use today and the matte version is okay, but I don't know. I haven't tried a ton of products from Armani Beauty and I just know that that is the one that I really don't like. <laughs> Artist Couture has a smaller line and collection at Sephora. So for me, this is the worst and most disappointing in my opinion. It's the Supreme Mauve's eyeshadow palette. And it's not even a bad palette, but the shimmers are really messy and they don't stick to the lid. And just given the price point and previous palettes that they've launched, this is the worst. They haven't launched too much bad stuff with the brand, but they also just haven't launched a lot in general, at least for what's currently available at Sephora. So this fell in the worst spot. I just don't think it's worth the money and I know they can do better. Bare Minerals does not stand out to me as a very good brand. They have like one or two products that I like and then everything else really falls in the middle. But I know the only product that I'm not that into is the Original Liquid Mineral Concealer. It always looks good when I first put it on, but I just feel like it swims a little bit too much into my fine lines and ages me as the day goes on. It's not that bad of a product. I don't think Bare Minerals has anything, at least from what I've tried, that has offended me in any ways. I have this. I don't like this, but I haven't tried anything else that sticks out to me as a terrible, terrible product. Now, the next item that I have is from Benefit. This is the Boing Cakeless Full Coverage Concealer. I find this concealer to be extremely matte and dry, so maybe if you have oily skin, you'll like this, but I find that whenever I wear this, it completely dries out my under eyes, and it's just not cute. I used the Bare Minerals today, and then I used a little bit of the Benefit in the inner corner, <laughs> and my under eyes look really dry right now, and it's only the beginning stages of the day. I haven't been wearing either of these products very long, and it just goes to show that I really really do not like these products but this is one of the driest concealers I've ever used. Not the driest. I'll talk about the driest but it's definitely one of them. And Benefit by the way does not have that many bad products at least that's being sold at Sephora right now. This one is like not good but it's one of the few not good. Bite Beauty as you guys know they have a very limited range right now because they are trying to sell all, all of their stock because Bite Beauty is no longer. So I did choose the Yay Sayer Plumping Lip Gloss. It's not even a bad lip gloss. I'm a little weirded out about the packaging. It was an uncomfortable application. If you were looking to buy Bite Beauty because their items are so discounted, this is the item that I would tell you you probably don't want to buy. There are other better products. So I'm not a bad product, but I had to pick something for the worst and this one would be it. I feel like you either love or hate this concealer and most people are on the hate side with me. This is a Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer and you'll notice in today's video I have a lot of complexion products because the skin is so particular and everybody's skin is so different. So for me, what stands out are complexion because if it doesn't work for me, it doesn't work for me. I don't have that many for lips or anything. This looks really dry underneath my eyes. So dry that it even dried out in its own container. Ages me so badly. This is one of the very few misses from Charlotte Tilbury. And this actually is not the worst product that Charlotte Tilbury has come out, but this is the worst product that's currently being sold at Sephora. Definitely don't
don't recommend this concealer if you're looking for any sort of hydration on the under eyes. I would say Charlotte Tilbury, while she markets towards everybody, she, especially before TikTok became a thing, she marketed towards a more mature audience. I just don't see this working on mature skin. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Danessa Myricks. I have the Infinite Chrome Flakes Multi Chrome Gel for eyes and face. I've heard mixed reviews on this, but for me, the experience hasn't been very nice. Maybe it's a shade that I have, but there's no pigmented base to it. It just feels like it's a gel with chrome flakes inside. So it looks really messy on the eyes and it doesn't dry down. So I find that whenever I wear it, it actually separates in the crease. It makes my makeup look really messy. If I had eyeshadow underneath, it separates the eyeshadow. Have not had any good experiences with this product. Okay, so Dior, what they have available right now at Sephora, not very many bad options, okay? Pretty much everything is good. I definitely poo-poo on a lot of the Dior limited edition items. I noticed that those aren't as good quality, but they don't sell those at Sephora. So you're in the clear for most of what you buy from Sephora. But this is an overpriced primer that I find does not do very much. This is the Forever Skin Veil Primer. Where I do like this is that there is a sunscreen element to it, so that's always great for that extra barrier of sun protection. But other than that, it literally just feels like a sunscreen, and I don't want my makeup primer to feel like a sunscreen. I wanted to actually do something for the makeup. I put on sunscreen before this for a reason. I don't need another layer of sunscreen, so it doesn't do too much. It has so many claims of how amazing it is and what it's gonna do for the skin. I don't find it does anything other than feel like a sunscreen. From Fenty Beauty, I picked out the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Longwear Liquid Concealer. Honestly, there's a number of products from Fenty that don't work for me complexion-wise. A couple of their foundations are some of my least favorite foundations. This is not part of the video, but the Hydrating Longwear Concealer is also not very nice on me. But this one also ages me very, very terribly. I am super picky about concealers. Every time I wear this, within the first hour, my under eyes look really wrinkly and it just doesn't travel well with the skin and my smiling and my eyes. So I don't like this. It's also very, very thick and I feel like it looks thick on the under eyes as well. So I'm not a fan of that. Gucci Beauty, we have the Natural Finish Liquid Foundation. The worst item that Gucci has ever come out with is the eyeshadow palette in my opinion. I just don't like it. It was super cheap and it was like $150 or something crazy like that. But luckily that's no longer sold at Sephora. So the next worst thing was this foundation. I just feel like it looks very heavy on the skin. It does not have the finish or a look of a luxury foundation. And I typically, when I find a good luxury foundation, I can tell it's a good luxury foundation. Not with this. You can get better at the drugstore if I'm being honest. So I'm not a fan of this. House Labs is the newest brand that I've tried recently. It actually was not in my best of video because I hadn't tried it yet. But the worst product in the line from what I've tried so far are the pigment paints, particularly the shimmery ones. So it depends on what capacity you're applying this product. I feel like even with the metallic, if you use this more of like a graphic liner, I think you will really like it. But if you use it in the way that I do, just to get a blended normal eyeshadow look, I find that the metallic and shimmer shades in here look really crepey and creasy on the eyelid. If you want to check out one of my most recent videos, my speed reviews video, I actually use the shimmer all over the lid and you'll see just how uneven and dry it looks on the eyelid. Mattes are much better, but they still do dry a little too fast for my preference. I think these are very nice for longevity and honestly, they are not a bad product. I actually am very, very happy with pretty much everything that came out in the line quality wise, but the shimmery pigment paint was definitely the one that I was the least excited about from the brand. Okay, Hourglass. I recently did a full face of Hourglass and I was so so impressed but one of my long time least favorites from the brand is their airbrush concealer. The less you use the better it is but honestly I mean I, I'm not gonna say I apply a little bit of concealer you know I like to get oomph in there because I kind of like to pull it down to give my face coverage and if you apply too much of this it will look like you apply too much. If you want this concealer to look good you literally only... 
thank you. You literally only should be using a dot. And for me, that's just too finicky. I'm not about that. I want to apply it how I want to apply it. It looks really thick on the skin. It ages me. Not a fan of this concealer, but pretty much everything else from Hourglass is awesome. Huda Beauty. Ooh, oh my gosh. I was excited to pick this one out because Huda Beauty has some really great products, but she also has some really not great products. And I've got to give Huda credit where credit is due. If a product that she releases does not get good reviews, she literally will discontinue it and reformulate it lickety split. She writes her wrongs quite fast, but this one I could not get to work for me. This is the Luminous Matte Foundation. First of all, the name itself is really contradictory. I find it looks really thick and cakey on my skin. It looks more matte and drying on my skin, but at the same time, the highlightiness makes it emphasize the texture on my skin. It just, it sits on top of the skin. It does not look good. It's one of my least favorite foundations. Ilia Beauty. Funny enough, my least favorite product from them is one of their best sellers, and this is the Multi-Stick Cream Blush and Lip Tint, you guys. I have a few shades of these. They just don't give me the color that I want, and it's inconsistent within the shades that you buy. Some will give you more color than others, but at the end of the day, I have to press really hard to get the pigment that I would like. They're a little too finicky for me. I feel like the only way that these are satisfactory for me is if I'm literally doing like a no makeup makeup look and have nothing on my skin and just want a little bit of color but that is a very rare occasion for me you know this is my job I love wearing makeup I can't get this to show up on me so I'm just not a fan it cosmetics I'm more familiar with their complexion products which I do really really enjoy though I do have a memory of trying this superhero mascara and not really getting the hype. Not a bad product at all, but it did fall in the worst from what I've tried from the brand. And my lashes are very, very sparse and thin to begin with. So that also is a big factor in this one. But I mean, I wasn't impressed by this mascara and it was the worst. All right, Jouer. No, I actually decluttered this. And that, that says something, because you guys know I'm not the best with decluttering. But this Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation, well, let me just say this. If you want full coverage, you're gonna get it with this. But for me, it just did not make sense for this to be in my collection because if I'm wearing this, I'm looking like I have a crap ton of makeup on. Literally cake city over here. It's drying. It's cakey, it's heavy on the skin. It gives you a lot of coverage and you could benefit from mixing it with oils or lighter weight products. But honestly, I just couldn't even justify keeping it in my collection. Jouer has some beautiful powder products and this one, mm -mm, by far the worst product that I've tried from them. Paja actually did not have very many bad products. I haven't tried absolutely everything from Kaja, but it brought me to this Wink Stamp Wink Island Liner stamp set thing. <laughs> I have it and let me just say this, the quality of the eyeliner is not bad. It's the application methods that I don't like. So you have a wing stamp which I think is really gimmicky. It literally is impossible for me to get my wings even because I'll stamp one pointing up towards the ceiling and one pointing down towards the ground. It's just not functional for me and then the actual eyeliner itself, it actually is a very nice eyeliner but the tip is so stiff. So yeah, mm, I wouldn't say these are a bad product, but it's one that I aggressively don't reach for in my makeup drawers. And I think that says a lot because I love my Kaja products. I am reaching for my Bento Trios on the reg. All right, let's talk Kosas now. Now Kosas has some really great products and I think I am in the minority with this one, but I do not like their Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. A big trend with foundations this year was adding skincare benefits to it. And I just think that made foundations take a turn for the worst because it was like the foundations can no longer wear a long time they no longer smooth over pores they sit really heavy on the skin they make you look sweaty and that's exactly what happened with this Kosas foundation in my opinion you know if you have really nice smooth poreless skin that's a little bit on the drier side I think you will love this you are the perfect candidate for this foundation but I think I got too much holes on my face too much holes too much smile lines all of that it just looks really heavy on my skin and emphasizes things that I don't want it to emphasize. KVD Beauty, I haven't tried the largest amount of products, so take this with a grain of salt, but I can tell you that I do not like the Apple Concealer 
Love the foundation. Not a fan of the concealer. It's like they tried to be a little bit too flexible with it in terms of it being flexible on the under eyes and hydrating while still giving full coverage. I just think that combo is too hard for them to do because it just looks really heavy on my under eyes. But because it's a creamy, more hydrating kind of consistency, it really ends up looking thick on those under eyes and, you know, the smile lines that happen over here. So, yeah. I mean, this is definitely a product that I straight up don't like from KVD, so I had to pick it. Now, Laura Mercier, underrated brand. I think they have a lot of great products, but for me, a product that I simply cannot get behind are the tinted moisturizer blushes, and the results with them are very inconsistent. Sometimes I use this product and I love it, and then other times it is just a terrible experience. So I noticed this works best with lighter weight products like a skin tint, but it very easily tends to get very patchy with application and sometimes pulls up the foundation underneath. It's a very finicky product. It's very finicky with what foundations it likes to go on top of. And yeah, today, it was okay. I had a decent experience. There was a little bit of patchiness going on, but I did have to look quite hard to even notice it. So it's just too picky of a product for me. The LYS Cream Bronzer. Honestly, have not tried a bad product from LYS. This is more of an inconvenient product to me rather than a bad product. It's a very emollient formula. I might even say a bit too emollient. The bronzer itself is just super duper, I don't know, emollient. <laughs> it's a little bit much with the touch of the skin. I just feel like it melts but my biggest issue with it is more so with the packaging it is really hard not to knit the actual bronzer itself you have to go slow to get the cap on top and like I said there really are no bad products from list from what I've personally tried and in my opinion but this one I would put at the worst just because of the packaging inconvenience makeup forever is another brand where it is hard for them to do wrong I mean they have been in the game and been at the top of their game for such a long time because they just create quality products. So for me, the item that stood out to me that I like the least from the brand are the Aqua Resist Color Inks. Now here's the caveat. They last all day. They are an amazing eyeliner formula. It's the application that gives me a little trouble. I tend to not like this type of eyeliner for applying anyways, but they did send them to me. I tried them. The quality is great. But with these types of eyeliners, I find that when you're applying the liner, they kind of cause the lashes to stick together. And then when you put them mascara on top it looks like you have three eyelashes so that happens with this application a little bit on the harder side so yeah that's my least favorite product makeup by mario super trendy brand right now so a lot of people get a little offended when i mention this but my least favorite product from them is the master eye prep and set and it's not because it's bad it's because it dried out really quickly which is causing me to have to tug at the eye to get the product to work which is not an area that you want to tug at so i would say probably with the first three uses i really like this. You take the creamy side, you blend it all over the eyelid, and then you use the powder over top to set. So very, very quickly, the cream products on top, they dried out, and now it's a lot of tugging on the eyelid to use this product. I actually haven't used it in a while for that reason, but I showed you today in the demo. It's just not good for the eye area. You don't want to be tugging at it like that. So it's very disappointing that that dried out so quickly. Moving on to Melt Cosmetics. So this I actually returned, and I very rarely return items. I see this as my job well it is my job and I buy so much makeup I, I don't return it you know I am able to profit off of what I do and buying makeup so I don't return things but this one I did because I was so offended by it. One of the worst eyeshadows to have come out. That's why it is still available for Melt because it was supposed to be limited edition. And it is on a discount. So the shades here are really powdery. The shimmers will literally just fall right off your eyelid and onto your face. Just one of the worst quality palettes I have ever tried from the high end price point. It's crazy. Not a good palette. Moving on to Milk Makeup. So I actually have two. I cheated a little bit. We'll talk about a newer item, the Hydro Grip Eyeshadow and Concealer Primer. I don't notice this actually helping with the longevity of my eyeshadow or my concealer, and I find that it makes my eyes look dry more than anything, especially if you have like a hint of concealer, which I normally do just from blending out my concealer or my foundation. It will just break up that area and make the makeup look really dry. So if anything, it kind of destroys the base that I have for the eyeshadow because of it breaking up the product underneath. This 
this Flex Foundation Stick. Well, I really like the way that it looks on the skin. It just, I have all these memories of it literally tugging on the skin. So just be warned, this isn't necessarily a bad product, but be warned that it's a stiff stick. So it's in your best interest to like warm it on the back of your hand and then use like a sponge or a brush to apply it, which is an additional step. It's not something that you want when it comes to paying for makeup at that price point, so just keep that in mind. NARS is known for their foundations, and while I will agree they do have some of the best foundations and complexion products, they have two foundations in particular that have really just hit me wrong. So the first one is the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I actually decluttered this. I had no use for it. It was an extremely matte and drying foundation, and yet it swam all over my skin, and I could not get it to set down. The transfer on this foundation was crazy. So many people love this. I I couldn't get it. You know, it was a full coverage foundation. It had that matte dry look, which wasn't necessarily bad. I think there's a place for a matte look, but it was just so odd at how it would literally just transfer everywhere. Mm -mm. Also, this foundation from NARS, same issues as the Radiant Longwear, but even drier and didn't transfer, but still not good. Look very heavy and cakey on the skin. But NARS also does have some really nice complexion products, but these two, I just, I don't get it. Q, the driest concealer I've ever tried. Return this one. That's another returner right here. This is the Natasha Denona Transfix Matte Concealer. I believe she's reformulating a bunch of things, so she's discontinuing a lot. This is getting discontinued. I bought this for a Sephora sale a couple years ago, and I just remember being like appalled by how dry this concealer made my under eyes look. Literally drier than the Sahara Desert. That's all I can say about this one. The worst product I've ever tried from the brand for sure. And you know she's one of my favorite brands, but this one was pretty stinking bad. Nude sticks, you know? <laughs> Who remembers this trend? I cannot believe they still even are selling this. This is the Rock and Roller Easy Eyeliner Ink. So it's a little mini wheel at the bottom of the eyeliner and you're using that to apply gimmicky. That's all I'm gonna say. I, I can't even believe they have the balls to literally still have the product on the website. That was a fad that came and went so quickly and I can't believe they're still selling that. <laughs> One size? my new brand. It's been out for a couple of years now. They've recently launched a lot more products. Overall, a very, very solid brand. This is the only product that I straight up have not liked from the brand. This is a Turn Up The Base Blurring Foundation. It's one of those products where it kind of looks good from afar, but then you get up close and then you can see how kind of cakey it is and sitting heavy on the skin. I think this is definitely more suited towards more oilier skin types. I think those of you who are oilier will really like it. But for me, it was like so odd how good my skin looked from afar, but then how terrible it looked from close up. So yeah, we want our makeup to look good at all times. This one did not do that. Pat McGrath, you guys know. Pat McGrath is my all-time favorite brand, but this is why my lips look so crusty and dry right now. This is a Liquid Lust Legendary Wear Matte Lipstick. She's matte and she's drying out my lips by the second. It's such a thin formula, very, very pigmented, but it's so thin that it shows every wrinkle and line on the lips. Very dry. I, my lips definitely look pruned because of this product. Don't recommend. The next brand that I have is Patrick Ta, and pa Patrick Ta straight up y'all does not have a bad product in his line so this is just personal for me and it's still a good product i know it is this is the major glow body oil this is one of the first products that he launched it smells like a burnt caramel deliciousness but mine came with faulty packaging whenever I sprayed it. I couldn't get it out, though I did show you in the demo, and of course it worked in the demo. But anyways, Patrick Shaw does not have a bad product, so I'm just going to make it personal with this one. Rare Beauty has a few products that I strongly dislike, but I think the worst product that they have, in my opinion, is the Brow Harmony Pencil and Gel. Now, the gel I actually used today, I like the gel, but the pencil side is literally the worst pencil I've ever used, or at least one of them. It's an extremely creamy eyebrow pencil, which leads me to having a very messy looking brow. So when it comes to brow products, I like mine on the drier side because that way I can individually, you know, draw in the eyebrow hairs. Not with this product, okay? Because anytime I use it, I can't get a nice line. It looks chunky and uneven in my eyebrows. And then when I try and blend it out, it gets everywhere, all outside of the eyebrow line. Moving forward onto Refi. Now this is a brand I've only tried four products from, but my least favorite is their brow pomade. 
the packaging is just not functional, but not only that, their brow pomade is too soft, so it's very easy to make a mess with, which you can see today. Now, half of that is my fault. I'm just a little bit out of practice when it comes to using brow pomades, but still, really messy, very difficult to use because it's too much of a good thing. It's too much of something creamy, so not as into this one. Next up is Say, and I've only tried two products from Say. One that I loved, the cream bronzer, and then this one, one that I hate. This is the Hydra Beam Brightening and Hydrating Under Eye Concealer. This is one of the most hydrating concealers to a fault because it almost has such a glowy finish to it that it's very unnatural against the skin because no skin is that glowy. So when you apply it, you can literally see the glowy concealer sitting on top. So it doesn't look natural at all. And because of how glowy it is, it actually emphasizes the dryness and wrinkles under the eyes, at least for me. It gives almost no coverage as well. So it, while it gives no coverage, it also is emphasizing things that I don't want it to emphasize. So yeah, I did not have very good luck with this concealer. Okay, we're moving on to Sephora collection next, which is Sephora's in-house makeup brand. And honestly, you guys, they have a lot of hits and misses, but they are a very quickly rotating brand, meaning if a product's not selling, they get rid of it quickly. So a lot of the products that I didn't like from the brand are actually no longer here. So from what I could find that I've tried that's still available that I'm not the biggest fan of, it's the Colorful Wink It Felt Tip Liquid Liner. It says it's waterproof. I don't find it to be waterproof. I don't find it to be black enough as well. I'm wearing it today. It looks okay, but it doesn't go over textured products very well. So if you have like any glittery makeup underneath, anything like that, metallic stuff, it instantly fades the black from this eyeliner. So I'm not a fan of this. I don't recommend it. There's some great hits from Sephora collection, but also a lot of misses. So you do need to be careful and do your research. I'm not gonna lie. I feel a little out of touch when it comes to Smashbox. I used to feel like I knew so much about the products from the brand and as I was going through the products that they sell on Sephora, I just was not familiar with a lot of them. But I can tell you I don't like this product. I tried this one recently. This is the Photo Finish Revitalized 8-in-1 Primer Essence. I didn't use it as a primer today. I don't really find that it does anything. I did use it to like kind of set my makeup, get a little bit of hydration. But one thing that I can't get over with this product is the smell. It smells like rotten flowers. It's not a good smile. It really puts me off from using the product and I really don't find that it does anything anyways. So yeah. Stila is unfortunately, I believe to be a dying brand. The stock at Sephora is becoming less and less and less. This is funny because this is my favorite product from Stila. I believe I put it on the best, but it's also the worst. Like I said, there are very few products from Stila that I can comment on. So this is the best because it's the original best glittery product for the eyes. But it's the worst because it dries out so quickly, making it unjustifiable for the price. And now Stila was the first brand to make this kind of product popular. I was obsessed with this product. I still am. I still keep a few in my collection, but I am no longer buying them simply because they just dry out so quickly and they get so flaky. The drugs at this point creates products like these that are just as good and they don't dry out so quickly so just keep that in mind. I kind of have a similar story for my least favorite product from Tarte. Now when it comes to Tarte, I think their brand's a little overrated. That's just my opinion. I, I would like to kind of go back, retry a lot of things from Tarte because I feel like I haven't given them a lot of chances, but I've tried a lot of things from Tarte that I didn't like, which is why it kind of changed my perception of the brand. But what I will say, most of the things that I don't like from Tarte are their limited edition products, particularly the holiday line stuff so those I couldn't even really talk about today because they were limited edition but don't buy those because they're very bad. But one product that I used to love that after having for a while I learned that I no longer loved were the chrome paint shadow pots. In stores these products are gonna blow your mind. Literal chrome for your eyelid. But what you do not know is that after having them once they dry out they literally explode. I have had so many of these explode because I used to keep these in my makeup kit before I knew that they exploded. And there have been multiple occasions where I would open one and it would just make a mess all over my makeup kit to the point where I can no longer justify having these. I used to have these in every color and then man, it bit me in the butt because they were a mess. They literally explode. I don't know how else to describe the situation, but yeah. They're so pretty, but they dry out very quickly and it's a mess. Tom Ford. Now Tom Ford is definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. You guys know I do like to buy a lot of their stuff, but I have to say the worst 
product that you can pick up from them is an eyeshadow palette because, first of all, you can get them at a really great discount on cosmetic company outlet stores, but also because they are just so inconsistent. I would say 90% of the palettes, 80% of the palettes that you buy from Tom Ford are completely overpriced and not worth the money. So while some of the ones that Sephora offers are really great, I do suggest that you do your research because they are $89 and there's a lot more of them that are bad than are good. So yeah. Now Too Faced is one of those brands that I feel like does not have a lot of bad products, believe it or not. I talk my crap about the brand, but they really don't release too many bad products except for their limited edition products just like Tarte and also their eyeshadow palettes I do find to be inconsistent. But everything else from the line, their complexion products, their eyebrow products are all really great lip products they do a good job with. But their eyeshadow palettes I find to be inconsistent. Now from what I saw at Sephora, this pretty rich diamond light eyeshadow palette is one of their worst, cheapest quality, cheapest feeling formulas. But also you do need to be careful with their mini eyeshadows. Now I haven't tried all of their eyeshadow palettes because I found they were so inconsistent. I just, I stopped giving them any chances. So be careful with these small ones. I've heard some were good, some were bad. So you also need to be careful of those. But the unsafe bet when it comes to Too Faced is picking up their eyeshadow palettes, particularly the one that I showed you and these little ones. Tower 28. So I'm taking back one of the ones that I talked about, but I did pull their tinted sunscreen foundation because I know I didn't like it. So I put it to the side. I stopped using it, but I actually used it today and I feel like my skin doesn't look that bad. So I think I'm changing my mind on it, but just know I didn't love it. But one that I don't like really is the Bronzino Illuminating Cream Bronzer. And I actually used to like this. I think I've mentioned it in a favorites video or something. But the longer I've had it, the less I've liked it because I started to notice that my face looked a little glittery when I wore these. And I find that this product has a very micro fine glitter that does not look good in the sun. So if I don't have the lights on me, I always thought that this looked good because I just didn't really look at it, you know. It was a great consistency, applied great. I thought the undertone was great. But then I'd go out in the sun and I feel like there was like glitters and it was also emphasizing very, very fine lines on the face. It's because of the micro fine glitter particles in this product and just the finish of it in general, which is like a little bit more gel-like. I find it to be unflattering against the texture of my skin. Urban Decay is how I feel about Too Faced. I haven't actually tried a product from them that was bad, but they're also inconsistent in their eyeshadow palettes. I'm sick of the naked. I really, really am. Clearly it's working for them or they just don't have any other ideas, but I think it's working for them if they're continuing to come out with them. Like this Wild West palette was okay quality. I'm sick of seeing these little mini ones, but honestly, I have not tried a bad product that I can recall or what is sold at Sephora from Urban Decay. So this is definitely a personal choice here and my own like kind of prejudices about the brand that I'm bringing these in, but I am sick of the naked palettes. And here's the thing with Urban Urban Decay's formula with eyeshadows. They don't have a bad formula, but they don't have a good formula. You know what I mean? The worst palette that I've tried was the one with the gems all over it. They don't have it anymore. Otherwise, I would have definitely picked this one, but inconsistent formula and not even good. Westman Atelier is a very, very pricey brand if you haven't heard of them. And I actually really enjoy some of their products, but one that I cannot get behind is the Vital Skin Foundation Stick. This hits on top of the skin. That's the only thing I can say about it. It's thick and it sits on top of the skin. I can't get it to blend in or look like one within my skin. It looks like I'm wearing makeup whenever I wear this, which is good because it's $68. So I don't need to spend $68 on that anymore. I love their cream blush, cream bronzer. They do a great job with those cream products, but for some reason I just cannot get behind the foundation. And the last brand that I have to talk about today is YSL. Now, grain of salt, haven't tried the most from YSL, but I have tried this product recently and I know I don't like it. It's the new lip and cheek balmy tint. There's something about this formula that's kind of Vaseline-y to me. Yeah, it, it just, it reminds me of Vaseline. I don't get too much color. I've been told if I got a deeper color because I did pick up the lighter color that the deeper color would show up on me because the color that I do have does not really show up on me. If I put it on top of a product that has a lot of coverage, the coverage literally makes the color of the balm disappear. The balm doesn't even look good on my lips. It makes my 
my lips look dry and like I said like I put Vaseline on my lips yeah um not a fan of this product and like I said I have not tried too much from YSL but I can tell you this is the worst one that I've tried to date anyways there we have it you guys those are the number one worst product from every brand at Sephora that I've tried and I've tried a lot of brands as you can see by the length of this video and as always of course this is just my opinion just my experiences I have normal to dry skin leaning a little bit more normal right now and with my makeup preferences and all that that is going to affect my opinions on these products but I will say I've tried a lot that will affect my opinions on these products so if there's anything you disagree with feel free to let me know in the comments anything that you do agree with vent with me in the comments love that as well and make sure you check out the best stuff so I will have that all linked down below for you guys thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel I'll catch you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one